Hey guys, how you doing? In today's video, we're going to be taking on four flankers in the F-15. My number two will be flown by Feisty, who is possibly the greatest wingman of all time. You're going to see why in the video. We're going to be doing some nice formation flying as we get into the AO, and then we're going to try and take out these flankers. Um, situational awareness will definitely be key in this fight, um, and we'll explore that a little bit uh, in the TAC view. Um, before we get started with the video guys, consider checking out the Wild Weasel store for some cool aviation gear. It's a nice way to support the channel and the DCS server, as Wild Weasel sponsors both. And you also get something kind of cool for yourself in the process. They got everything from t-shirts to hoodies to mugs to mouse pads. And uh, keep in mind that all my viewers get 10% off with the code GROWLING10. So definitely consider checking them out and see if there's anything in there you like. Alright guys. Let's get started with the video. Two's ready. All right, Mafia flight spool up. Two. Rearming complete. Mafia flight, taxi, runway three zero. Two. I'm gonna be the most obnoxious wingman in this flight. Just for you. Lovely. Dude, when the 16 comes out, you and I need to rage BFM in the 16. 100%, dude. Two set. Run it up. Two. On my command. Brakes. Release.
Now, we have my number two off to the left side here. And I'm just going to indicate for him to move over to the other side by just dipping my wing here. I don't even have to say anything. You see that little dip? And he's got it. There he goes. It's a hell of a wingman right there, ladies and gentlemen. So you'll notice that number two here is flying a fingertip formation. And uh, fingertip is usually used for weather penetration, uh, airfield arrivals, departures, and uh, show formations because it looks cool. So a very important part of fingertip is that lead should make all turns slow, smooth, and deliberate. Because you can tell the spacing is really tight and there's not a lot of room for error. I wonder what's up with that AWAX. Yeah, that's weird. Two. Go tactical. Two! Two fence in. Two.
Music on. Two. Okay, two, you scan high, I'm gonna scan low. Two. Mafia, check left to one nine zero. Uh, two is contact, uh, two ship, five degrees off our nose to the left, 185. Two punch bags. Two. Uh, what angels do you see them at? Stand by. Uh, contact's faded.
check max for me. I do not know why I lost them. I'm a little paranoid now. Two standby. Two, say your angels. I'm up at 50,000 feet. <laughs> Mafia check left, one eight zero. Some weird shit's going on. Yeah. Hey, uh, go ahead and uh, change heading to 270. 270. Yeah, I don't like this. <laughs> yeah, they're doing some shifty shit here. Oh, I got a four ship, uh, 12 o'clock. Okay, you press them. Copy, it takes spacing. You want me to... All right, I got the two ship locked. There's uh, another group behind the two ship. These guys are at 40 miles. Um, 180, they're flanking. Yeah, copy. I got them. Copy. Word. Uh, do you have my posit? Stand by. I'm just locking these guys up. Copy. I have a, just the two ship. I do not see the other. I think they might be off to our left. I'm going to offset left to see if I can pick them up. Copy. Scan low. They're probably trying to hide in the mountains there. Yep. I got them. Okay. Those two guys are yours. I'm taking these two. Copy. Resetting. At least, yeah, I got, I got both of them. Uh, they're at 28 miles. I'm shooting. Fox 3. Fox 3. Spiked. I'm offsetting left. And I'm diving. Missile out. Turn back in, send two more their way. Coming off cold. I'm inside of 20 on my guys. Copy. Uh, are you in the con? Yep. Copy on visual. Fox 3, one's defending. Copy. I'm turning in on your group. Give me their altitude. Uh, Angels 39. Copy. Turn into my group. If you can. Copy, turning in. Alright, I've got your group. Fox 3. I got one locked. I've got two locked. Alright, they're turning back in hot. Fox 3 on your group. Copy. See if you can pick mine up. Turn my jammer off. And Fox 3 on your group. Off I'm offsetting right on your group.
I am at 16,000. Got me. They're pressing me pretty hard. They're fixated on Copy. me. Copy. I'm going low into the mountains. Copy. I'm going to turn back in. Going low as well. Splash. Two. Copy. Pause it. Altitude. Where are you at? Angel six. I've engaged the other two. Copy. Bearing Copy. Uh, zero six zero. In the mountains. Copy. I am. I'm in the mountains as well. I'm low. I don't see you. I'll try to pop up and pick you up. Oh, we got him. Did I get him? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Let me uh, let me see I if I can get a rejoin on you. Oh. Uh, I'm on your three o'clock. Uh, copy. Do you see me? Uh, yeah. One flare up. I got you. I got you. I got you. Alright guys, so here's the tack view. We got a lot to talk about in this one, so I'm hoping that I don't forget anything as we go. Um, so we have two F-15s taking on four flankers, and so one of the reasons that I did that is because the F-15 has the AIM-120C, the Charlie variant, which is a very good missile. It's the best in TCS, and the Russians don't really have anything that matches it. 
and for that reason it seemed a little unfair to make two Russians take on two F-15s, um, especially because I didn't necessarily want to limit the, the weapons of the aircraft. So what I decided to do was to outnumber us, and that seems a little bit more fair. Um, so that's what we did, especially when you factor in the fact that the F-15s have TWS, and they can... Uh, That's interesting. When you switch to another one, the other one starts stuttering in TACVIA. Um, so the fact that the F-15s have TWS um, with the AIM-120Cs, that means that the flankers are going to be at a major disadvantage. So it just didn't seem fair, right? Um, the, the flankers do have an advantage over the F-15 in the sense that they have a data link, which is why I gave them an AWACS here. We also had an AWACS, but it didn't do anything for some mission. For some reason in the mission, it didn't uh, didn't talk to us at all, and we couldn't contact it. So I'm not sure what's going on with that. Um, you see here, Feisty going to tactical spread here as we uh, got into the combat zone. So the the flankers had the advantage of a data link, and um, we didn't. So what they should have done, which is what they seem to be trying to do, was to destroy the situational awareness of the F-15. That's one of the major weaknesses of the F-15, is the pilot's inability to maintain situational awareness. Like, there's no tools helping the, the pilot do that, for the most part, in, uh, in the sense of a data link or something like that. Um, so that's definitely the weakest part of the F-15 that we have in DCS. Um, however, in order to bypass that problem, what we did was climb up to 40,000 feet. And the reason we do that is, one, to get out of contrails, um, because you don't want to mark. It makes you a very easy target. And the second reason was to, if we get high enough, we can see into all of these crevices with our radar. We can just push the radar down and look into everything, so they theoretically wouldn't be able to hide from us unless they got very, very lucky. Um, right, so that's basically what's going on. We're up at 40,000 feet with a tactical spread. Um, the reason for this is just so we're spread out far enough that like, it's, it's just it's outside of two nautical at this point. And the idea is just so we can cover more of the sky together. And I had feisty scanning low and I was trying to stay at the higher altitudes. And you can see that the flankers have decided that they want to go for a pincer move. So they've broken off into two separate groups, and one is going high and one is staying low. So it seems like the high group is trying to be bait, and they're vectoring pretty much into us. So if I was to take a guess, what they're probably going to do is try to bait us out and engage us this way. And these guys are going to try to sneak in through the mountains and hit us in a flank um, where we least expect it. Okay. So, as you noticed, me and Feisty kind of started to feel like some weird stuff was going on in the flight there. And um, I started to push us to 270, I believe, was the, the bearing that I called out. And the reason for that was because we weren't really getting anything. Like, we got one. Uh, we had them on radar for about a second. Feisty picked them up. He got the first tally. And uh, then we lost them. They faded. And so it was my idea that I thought, personally, in my head, I don't have time to explain it at the time, but it was that um, they may be entering a notch into this direction, and the other group is notching this way. And or they're already in the mountains, which they were. Okay, so this creates a situation where I thought maybe we were flying right into a pincer. And so what I wanted to do was shift us over into this direction, also because I didn't want to fight them in the mountains. I wanted to push us into this direction where we would be able to fight them over smaller mountains, flat terrain, or even the water, ideally. Um, that's what I was going for. However, as soon as we start to do that, as soon as I start to make that turn, Feisty gets them on, on radar, and you can see him aboard the turn right there. 
and I come back around and I get them on radar Feisty does a little left offset and he picks these two up and so what happens is Feisty is going to go after the first group and I'm going to come after this group so at this point we've got our situational awareness down pretty good that is that we know that we have two groups and we have one low one high and we know their bearings so we're in a pretty good situation at this point we definitely have the advantage you can see feisty here firing on these two guys at 26 nautical miles we'll put the labels on so this is victor fox and mike pence over here are our two low bandits and the high bandits are envy and otskaya okay so uh, feisty is going to come around and he's going to fire off at 26 nautical miles he's going to give them two aim 20 c's okay now it is my personal opinion that these amrams were never going to hit them they're too long okay they actually may have come off the rails at 27 nautical so it's too far because he's he's in a good position we having the altitude advantage on these two guys however the 26 nautical miles is just in my opinion too far and the missile has to fight into dense air to hit them because they're so low so the missile is going to lose a lot of energy however what he is achieving with firing these missiles is that he's forcing these two bandits defensive he's pushing them off of our flank and you can see them defend here look at this and just keep in mind that while he's doing this while he's protecting our flank I'm over here engaging the two bandits that are really a higher priority target because they have an altitude advantage okay so they're actually pretty dangerous and I'm going after these guys and Feisty's protecting our flank he's gonna fire his two M120s and you can see that they fired on him that missile is also probably never gonna hit feisty unless he does something really stupid and so you can see this guy look at them defend All right like Mike Pence is no longer pushing and closing in that distance uh, Victor's coming in a little bit he's getting a little aggressive also because he's guiding that missile so he's just trying to stay a little nose hot he has offset to the left here um, this is a crank and he's doing a crank to bleed this missile energy but also stay within the gimbal limits of his radar so he can guide his Fox 1 to hitting Feisty okay Feisty gives two more off um, I think that he thought he had both of them locked up but he actually fired two on just one bandit and at this point um, Victor has had enough and he is also entering the notch and defending missiles which means he also was no longer pushing us so feisty has effectively put the, f the flanking bandits into a full defensive posture and they're no longer pushing us which is going to buy us a lot of time he immediately is going to recommit onto my guys okay so he's going to help me solve my problem so let's just back up and look at what i'm doing meanwhile all that's happening so we got me right here and we got our two bandits off at about 18 nautical miles so I've pushed in really close and so I'm gonna fire off two AIM-120s and I'm gonna immediately defend by putting my nose down and dragging those missiles into dense air you can see these two guys are defending those AMRAM launches and they fired off ETs which is a heat seeker FOX-2 and the other guy has done the same ET FOX-2 and a third ET Fox 2 okay so that's three missiles on me I'm gonna defend it now notice that as I defend I'm not fully vertically nose down I'm still keeping them within the gimbal limits of my radar I still have them locked because I'm slightly doubting that these two AMRAMs will hit them and if I allow them to defeat those two missiles that I sent at them We'll remove the, the labels. Uh, these two AMRAMs that I sent at them, if they defeat these two, they're essentially free to push us. And they're going to kill me, assuming that Feisty um, 
can't get a lock and push them off. It's just kind of a risk factor. So what I'm gonna do is keep them within the gimbal limits of my radar. And I'm gonna just point my nose kinda back at them, not really. And I'm just gonna fire off two more. Now this is within 10 nautical miles. So yes, I fired these AMRAMs at a very incorrect angle, but they are gonna turn into target and they should have more than enough energy, even though they had to make a large turn to get to the target. At this point, I'm gonna start flaring just in case they fired off an ET, which is exactly what they did. You can see that those ETs don't have the energy to maneuver and hit me. And those are my first two missiles. Mach 1.2 on this one, Mach 1.4 on this one, but they're just not maneuverable enough. And my speed is Mach 1.5. So I'm much faster than these missiles at this point. And notice my two other missiles that were supposed to keep them defensive. Now what I think happened is they didn't realize that two more missiles had been fired at them. They thought that it was just these two. So they started to push. By the time they realize, it's too late. And who was this? This is Envy. He's going to take an AMRAM at Mach 2.3. So like I said, those missiles have enough energy to hit the target. And that's a hit. And then we have Otskaya here who's going to take an AMRAM at Mach 1.8, 1.7. However, it doesn't knock him out of the fight. He's hurt, but he's not done. He may be also combat ineffective, but for whatever reason, that AMRAM did not kill him. You can tell at this point, Feisty's already re-engaged and fired two more AMRAMs. Okay. Those two bandits that were defensive are now back pushing. We have Victor and Mike Pence back on the offensive here. And at this point, I have pretty good situational awareness. I know where they are, I know they're low, and I know that more than likely they're recommitting. And notice how me and Feisty switch targets here. So I fired my first volley at my guys. I didn't know if I was going to hit him or not. And I switched on to his guys, and he came around and switched on to my guys. So creating a little bit of uh, situational awareness problems for the other bandits. Not entirely sure what's going on here. And I'm going low just to defeat any missiles that were on my tail. And at this point, I am just trying to do a loop and come back around and try to engage the guys that are going to come over this mountaintop here. There they are. Now there is a certain amount of luck uh, attributed to this because they came around at the perfect time. And so what I did was I put the, the F-15 into boresight and I just kind of scanned it across the top of this mountain just hoping that it would maybe pick something up. And it did. And I got my first lock on Victor. Now, I knew that if Victor had come over the top, and more than likely there was a second bandit that was coming over the top as well. And I'd already scanned this area, so I was going to push this way to see if I could pick somebody up. If Boresight wasn't going to work, I was going to switch to Vertical. Okay. Now, Vertical scan, you have to be within, I believe, 5 nautical. Boresight, you can get away with 10. So Boresight's the first one you want to use. And so it looks like um, Victor hadn't seen me just yet as I come over the top there. He starts to try to point his nose at me, and all of a sudden he's got two AMRAMs off at him. So he's going to flare, and it's just not going to be enough. And he's going to eat that first AMRAM, and a second one. The second one's going to miss, but he's dead. And so with the boar side again, I lock up the second bandit. Again, this is a bit of luck, a little bit of situational awareness kind of thing going on here. And I fire off two at him. I start to dip my altitude to drag this missile into the mountaintop which is exactly what happens but I didn't know that so just to be safe I also dropped some flares okay and that AMRAM that I fired at him both of them are going to hit him at Mach 2.8 and that's a splash bandit and Feisty's dusted off that last guy Ah, this guy's just falling into the dirt anyway. Alright, so basically uh, what we can see here is that Feisty was an amazing wingman. 
in this situation. He managed to offset these two guys and uh, dust off the other guy, switch targets with me. He also, let's remember, he's the first one to tally the bandits. Um, he saw them before I did. So, absolutely critical. This is what happens when you have a good wingman, guys. Um, everything kind of just works out. So we managed to splash four flankers. Full credit to Feisty on this one. Great assistance. Great assistance. And uh, he's going to form back up and we're going to go home. Alright, so... Uh, that's going to be the tag view for today. There was a lot to talk about there. I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure we covered everything I wanted to talk about. So, uh, yeah, guys, that's going to be the tag view. Okay. Um, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. At least found it entertaining. Um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.